Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for joining and I welcome you to our webinar on investment perspective in the AFC, hosted by AFC Business Connect, the key AFC body for business development and investment attraction. So our session will be in English, so if you wish, you can tap the globe uh, button on your Zoom dashboard and select another language, Russian or Kazakh. So uh, during our webinar, uh, we will focus on the AFC as a gateway to Kazakhstan and cen Central Asia as and uh, a de-risking platform for international investor community. Its features and benefits making the AFC jurisdiction favorable for investors seeking expansion to the region. We will also uh, highlight uh, the investment structure and instrument and solutions available at the AFC to best structure deals in line with international standards and investor needs. Uh, we will also um, touch upon the remit of the EAFC Business Connect Investments Division with regards to investment attraction and project promotion. And then we will give a quick overview of Kazakhstan investment environment with a focus on the solutions for optimizing and protecting investment returns at the AAFC platform. So now please let me introduce myself. My name is Timir Sambinov. I am the head of corporate affairs and marketing department at AFC Business Connect, and I will moderate today's session. I hope you will enjoy it and uh, find it useful for you. So today uh, we are honored to have very distinguished uh, panel of speakers with an extensive and impressive experience within their areas of expertise. So I'm happy to introduce Mr. James Martin. He's a co-chairman of the board of directors of the AFC Business Connect, and also he is chief investment officer of the AAFC. Then our next speaker is a Timirlan Muhammadjanov, the chief executive officer of the AFC Business Connect. Also, I'm happy to introduce uh, Ms. Elena Ten, Senior Manager of the Investment Department, AFC Business Connect. And last but not least, uh, Mr. Paul Pullinger, the Senior Partner of Ozara Services, the AFC participant company, rendering consultancy services. So, uh, as you all know, uh, Kazakhstan and the Central Asia region uh, having a unique uh, geographical location in the very center of Eurasia, as well as uh, vast reserves of natural resources, are undoubtedly attractive for investment. However, despite this fact, investors still strive to secure their investment and assets as much as possible, as well as to obtain a jurisdiction that they understand with a transparent regulation in line with the best international standards. And such a unique jurisdiction for them is the AAFC, which is the gateway to the investment market of Kazakhstan and Central Asia. And now I'm happy to pass the floor to Mr. James Martin to, to speak about uh, the AAFC as a de-risking platform for investments. James, please, the, the floor is yours. James, your microphone. Thank you very much, Tamir. Distinguished panelists, uh, honorable ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, without further ado, uh, we'd like to apologize for the, for the technical start, but let me, let me provide some background on AAFC before we get into more detail, which my panelists will provide you. And also, it's important that we're joined, as, as Tamir mentioned, by, by Paul Mozara, who's one of our key participants in supporting uh, those looking to join and avail of AFC. So the panel itself is talking really about not only de-risking investments, but how can we support you to meet your business needs? So from that perspective, what I would like to say is that we look at uh, the AFC ecosystem in two sort of separate ways. It's very much part of the government infrastructure. On the other hand, it's very much about a client-centric ecosystem. So it's always looking from your perspective, how can we improve and help improve the investment climate of Kazakhstan? What do you, the end investor and participants need in order to feel safe to avail of the opportunities in Kazakhstan? 
and the wider Central Asia. But it's also to ensure, which is the main reason of why we established Business Connect, to ensure that you are given access for real projects. It's all about real projects meeting up with real capital. So basically, the, the uh, AIFC was set up under the auspices of um, our founding father, Nursultan Zubayev. And the main reason why he had this vision was to establish um, a structure to enable you to access the benefits and the, the assets that we are blessed with in this region. And there is such huge potential, not only for Kazakhstan, but the wider region. So I wanted to touch upon the main sort of parameters of this. But the second point, which I was referring to before, is that it's essentially using AIFC as a de-risking platform. So what we're talking about today is how can we help you to de-risk and how can we help you to, to do real business? So I want to touch upon the, some of the key facets of understanding AIFC before I'll lead my colleagues to go into the detail of how we can facilitate for you. But the AIFC is governed by our management council which is chaired by His Excellency President Tukayev and co-chaired by His Excellency the Prime Minister Mamin. So it's important to understand that it's a key part of the infrastructure where we're looking to ensure that we're working in line with the ministry. And on that note, one of the founding remits that we have is to assist the government in attracting investment into Kazakhstan. So we work very, very closely with the government uh, assets and with the government ministries to make sure that we can help you to face that. We then have also on the Management Council international dignitaries from the likes of international banks, from institutions that are ranging from geography, from the likes of the US Citibank. We have the uh, Middle East from the head of the Islamic Development Bank. We have specialists from Central Asia, understanding the geographic, geographical local, but also international needs and experience. We then have the governor of the AFC, His Excellency Karat Kalimbetov, who also currently has the same role of chairman of the Agency for Strategic Planning and Reform, so that again, it's matching into what is reality going on in the Kazakh jurisdiction. We have the authority, we have the AFSA, which is the international standard regulator. And we have the key parameter, the key fundamental area of de-risking, which is the court and the arbitration center. And they are guaranteed to provide, provide you with certainty and finality, because you will understand it would be treated equally and fairly in a known jurisdiction law. So we have the governing principles of England and Wales, and from the arbitration center, we have full international multitude where you can actually choose international leading arbitrators, where you'll be able to choose and to mediate an arbitration in different languages as well. And they've already had over 600 cases, so it's been very, very active and tested, and we continue to see how we can test in different lights. On top of that, then I won't go into detail, but we have some of the, some of the areas which we have. I'll touch upon AIA because it's important for you just to understand when you look at investment and partnerships, we have two main areas that you can focus on, public finance, capital raising and private. And private is very much also facilitated through the AFC Business Connect, where it's very, very key that we're looking at international standards you will recognize. So then looking at these, we have the expat center who are guaranteed to help you with ease of doing business, registration, facilitation for your employees and establishing yourself in the wider Kazakh system, which has to be done as an AFC participant. Business Connect, as we have with regards to this, we set up again Business Connect so that we would be a lot closer to international standards that you would recognize how we do business. How can we facilitate you to identify your wants, your needs, your investment mandates, and to help you facilitate business? The FinTech Hub, as it's called, but it's rebranding to the Tech Hub because we're very much focusing on innovation, digitalization, Financial technologies, absolutely, but as I like to say, we are not a financial services center. We are very more importantly a center for raising finance. As we see with work we're doing in agriculture, still the mining, a lot of renewable energies, the likes of tourism. So it's facilitatory, not just for the financial services. 
So we're looking at agricultural technology. There's also legal technology. There's other technologies to benefit of the full human capital development that we can uh, use in here in Kazakhstan. And then the, we have the Green Finance Center. It's very important as we look forward for not only our own investments, but to facilitate of international investments and shareholder value around the environmental the social responsibility as well, how we can help you with that. And BCPD, again, is back to the importance of human capital development, where we have a professional services. So again, the final point I would like, sorry, to make with regards to the courts are it is full, not only full Welsh and English law, but it is also the full around 300 lawyers that we have. It is fully online that we can do this work. And we have the top lawyers and judges from the United Kingdom. So we have the QC lawyers, and they're the only ones which, and, uh, which are involved. And they are also very much present. But what is important to understand from a business perspective is that any decision made by the court as a ruling or the arbitration center is enforceable not only on the jurisdictions of Kazakhstan, but also internationally. To give you that certainty that you'll be treated equally, but the, but the rulings will also be enforceable as well. As we go on to talking about AFSA then, AFSA is with regards to understanding the best practices internationally, but also to understand how we can be very flexible in what we want to do. So obviously uh, my colleague uh, Timurlan will be talking about how we facilitate and how we act versus the other jurisdictions of which you're familiar. But one thing things I wanted to highlight on, it is building on best practices, best practices of the other financial centers but also it's important to listen to you. What do you need to see from our regulator? What do you need to see from our courts that we can try and facilitate that? And when it comes to things that we can change, we will do so based on common understanding. However, we also look to facilitate changes if they need to be made on a more federal level as well. Uh, we have, sorry, we have over a thousand participants now, which was quite a, uh, quite a milestone. And they're from over 59 countries. And a lot of the names are spread across quite a few areas. We have the likes of the professional services companies, and we have the likes of technology companies, but also it's about participants who can help you with financing and funding, but also those who can help you with partnerships as well to understand how best to do business within the Kazakhstan and Central Asian region. I won't go into detail on this slide, but again, the expat center, what you should remember is it's all about ease of doing business. We managed to benefit from the COVID with regards to putting in, in um, sorry, pushing through government and institutional reform. That meant, for instance, that we're allowed to do a lot of more things from an e-digital perspective with regards to establishment of a country, uh, sorry, of a company, but also with regards to helping you and your employees with regards to the likes of setting up visas, with regards to the likes of getting all the essential uh, items that your, that your employees may need for establishing themselves and perhaps living here in Kazakhstan. And then it's important that we, when you come to us and you speak to our advisors, such as Ozara, you understand what are the comparisons when you set up an AFC versus jurisdictions of which you're familiar with. But again, the expat center can help you with this stuff as well. So, I mean, what we're talking about doing is ease of business. And again, what we're talking about is understanding how you can not only avail of international standards, but what are the additional benefits you get from us? So we talk about things such as we have the flexibility to operate across different offices within Kazakhstan, because whereas people may be doing capital raising, they may also have operations, for instance, in the south of Kazakhstan or in their own operations with regards to pharmaceuticals or oil and gas industry. But the idea is for us to learn of these practices. So we're looking very much how we can cooperate with the other special economic zones. Which leads me to a final point on this, which is where, although you establish yourselves in the AFC, you can still avail of all the benefits incentive programs that the other ministries and institutions offer onshore. So it's about full interaction with the existing network. When it comes to capital raising, then a lot of people are looking at perhaps 
the IPO, the SPO of public offerings, which we have through our international exchange in the AIX. But also, they were looking to tap into, as I mentioned before, green finance and Islamic finance. And that means, for instance, with the likes of a green bond, where you may be wanting to issue to raise either for shareholder value, not only for finance, but also if you want to get partnership with some of the larger uh, institutional, the supranational funds as well. And the likes of, from a practical perspective, you can even do a private placement of a green bond where you will have, for instance, the coupon will be tax free. So it's again listening to it, but it's but in our case, it's also about accessing the likes of the privatization programs where we've already launched the uh, Kazasaprom and other international markets as well for listings. But we have the foundation of international players such as Goldman Sachs, the Chinese Sovereign Wealth Fund, the Shanghai Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, who are international players to understand how we can avail of these partnerships. And then something which is interesting for the actual capital raise and access to public investment, but we've also launched last year uh, Tabiz, which is a retail trading platform to try and extend the uh, retail market within the country. Uh, green solutions, we can also help you, I wanted to mention with regards to not only green and social bond issuance, but how to also benefit of the green projects we're doing as well with the likes of private public partnerships as well, which we can work, which we can talk about as we continue to use AFC to diversify, diversify the economy and away from the oil and gas dependency, which our historically we've been based on. So that's where I want to leave it there. I want to thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you. But again, I hand over to my knowledgeable colleagues who can talk a lot more in detail how we can support you in investing and uh, setting up services here in Kazakhstan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, James. So as you can see here at the IFC, we pay great attention to the risking measures for investors and manage to create a full-fledged uh, and developed ecosystem to make sure that investors willing to invest via AAFC feel comfortable and well protected in our jurisdiction. And now I'm happy to pass the floor to Mr. Tamerlan Mohamedjanov, the CEO of, of the AAFC Business Connect, who will in, uh, enlighten us about which specific tools are available in the AAFC to best uh, structure the investment activity. So uh, please, Tamerlan, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Tanner. Uh, greetings to everyone who's joined this call. Uh, so, building upon what James has uh, just said, I probably would like to start off with some very brief introduction of uh, AFC Business Connect now role in the uh, ecosystem of Astana International Financial Center. Uh, so, which is basically twofold. Uh, firstly, we act um, as the primary point of support for companies uh, wishing to get registered or uh, become authorized in our financial center. So in this respect, we provide end-to-end -end support, uh, starting from providing initial consultation about regulations uh, of uh, AFC to assisting in filling uh, the submission forms. Uh, as was already mentioned by James, there are present time there are more than 1,000 uh, participants in our financial center, and uh, two thirds of these companies were registered or authorized uh, to thanks uh, thanks to our immediate support. Uh, besides assisting uh, new companies to become uh, AFC participants, we help handle their post registration procedures. Uh, which can be as simple as uh, changing the address of the company to as complex as alteration of the share capital. Uh, uh, our second key role in the AFC, uh, which uh, Elena will uh, dwell on in more detail, uh, is to help link uh, bankable investment opportunities in Kazakhstan and generally uh, broader in Central Asian region with global capital pool. Uh, to that end, we screen and verify investment opportunities in uh, varying industries uh, and uh, try to match them with appropriate buy side investors around the world, uh, and facilitating this interaction between the two uh, parties across the, across, the, across the whole process. Uh, so, uh, this is like a brief intro, which I hope would um, give some sense of what uh, AFC business. 
business connects about. Uh, and uh, let me then turn on my uh, topic of presentations, uh, which is, you know, like uh, to give, uh, to provide some insight into how AFC as a jurisdictions can be used for, uh, you know, like structuring of investment transactions or activity in general, uh, establishing presence in AFC. <coughs> Uh, so, as already been uh, highlighted, uh, AFC law is based on the norms and principles of uh, of English law, which in turn is widely used in commercial tran commercial transactions, uh, in, in particular in post-Soviet space countries. Uh, accordingly, the main legal mechanisms of uh, English contract law are also part of AFC contract law. Uh, this includes, uh, among other things, such legal mechanisms as you see on the uh, left part of the of the slide, legal mechanisms and institutions uh, such as representations, indemnities against losses, liquidated damages, employed terms, uh, and uh, regulation of unfair contract terms. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the key reasons of widespread use of English law in commercial transactions is a reliable judicial system. And as uh, you might, I mean, as has already been mentioned by our colleagues, uh, AFC operates its own independent court system, uh, which is separate uh, from, which is separate and independent from the judicial system of Kazakhstan. Uh, so it has exclusive jurisdictions over disputes arising out of activities and operations uh, of the AFC uh, and in the cases uh, of other disputes in which parties, uh, parties intentionally uh, agree to give AFC court jurisdiction. Uh, the judge, procedures, practices and uh, standards of the AFC courts uh, will be much familiar to the businesses currently operating in major financial centers around the world. Uh, and uh, as uh, many of you know, AFC court has uh, 10 distinguished judges, uh, all of whom are among the most experienced uh, from the common law world with global reputations for independent and impartiality. Uh, that's uh, like signing up, uh, let's say like the slides, uh, I'd like to say that in the context of commercial contractual relations, AFC law uh, can be viewed a uh, full-fledged alternative to English law, which is, uh, uh, I guess, our key distinctive feature. Uh, in addition to this, like mechanisms, AFC law provides for the possibility to uh, register an entity in a variety of different legal forms, which you can see uh, on the right-hand side of the, of the slide, uh, depending on the needs and objectives of founders, uh, and importantly, corporate governance issues for each of these legal forms are governed by separate legal acts uh, of AFC, which, uh, which are based on the principles of the corresponding legislative acts of the common law jurisdictions. Uh, obviously, the most common form of company incorporation in the AFC is a private company uh, limited by shares, which, li which, which limits the liabilities of shareholder only to the extent of unpaid portion. Uh, of share capital, uh, of which uh, and shares of which cannot be offered to an unlimited number of persons. Uh, so uh, I'll stop briefly on a few other legal forms on, on uh, which are listed here uh, in the next slide. Uh, as you know, like uh, AFC offers uh, three types of limited partnerships, uh, which you can see here. Uh, I'll probably skip two of them and uh, focus on a limited partnership, which is commonly used uh, for, uh, you know, like uh, to carry out joint businesses, uh, such as like uh, collective investment schemes. Um, so uh, partnership as a legal form are used to carry out joint business, uh, thanks to convenience and flexibility. Uh, they bring in terms of uh, agreeing partners relations. Uh, if we talk about limited partnership in particular, uh, this form as a rule is used to structure funds and other structures that provide uh, for the management of assets on a pooling basis. So as in every lim typical limited partnership structure, there are two types of partners, limited and general. The former usually acts as a passive investors with, uh, with their liabilities limited to 
commitments they make, uh, while the general partner bears unlimited liability for the partnerships and runs its scale operations. Uh, the procedure for withdrawal of limited partners from partnerships is usually extremely simple uh, and can be carried out even without terminating the partnership agreement. Uh, so uh, this is a pretty like, like standard uh, and familiar legal form, as I said, uh, commonly used to structure funds. Uh, uh, switching, uh, going next, I'd like to also just uh, highlight some of the features that our special purpose companies uh, framework offers. Uh, general SPV regulation in AFC is pretty standard and is largely based uh, and is largely in line with the international best practices. Uh, and uh, as in many jurisdictions and as many other jurisdictions around the world, there's no minimal capital requirements. Uh, nor is there any requirement for physical presence. Uh, SPV incorporation, domiciliation, management, directorship, and other functions uh, can be outsourced of, to company service providers. Uh, going next, uh, I'd like to uh, stop a bit about uh, restricted scope company. Uh, it's a new legal form which was uh, adopted uh, in 2020 in 2019 i guess and uh, this 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 uh this was modeled upon the abu dhabi global markets uh framework uh and uh and the, the key differentiation is key differentiation of this uh legal form is limitation of public information but but about such company uh, so, uh, while normal companies have to disclose uh, key information, including the information on their ultimate beneficiaries uh, uh, in a public domain, this type of company is, uh, has, has possibility to uh, restrict such information, uh, but at the same time, all information, including uh, the ultimate benefic beneficiaries of this type of company is available to the registrar of AFC companies uh, and can be provided in certain in certain case on request. Uh, and uh, usually like restricted scope companies are used to manage family assets uh, and structuring of passive subsidiaries by international companies. Uh, so uh, as you can see in the in the lower part of the slide, uh, there are requirements uh, which are applicable to those incorporating a restricted scope company. So it's only, uh, can only be a subsidiary undertaking of another body corporate uh, that prepares and publishes group accounts and accounts under AFC com uh, company regulations. Uh, it can uh, be directly or indirectly wholly owned by one person or a group of persons who are members of the same family. Uh, so that's the uh, family office link uh, and it can be a subsidiary undertaking of by corporate that has been formed by a degree of president of the Republic of Pakistan. So this applies basically to national companies only. Uh, another legal form available at AFC uh, and which is, you know, like, uh, which is uh, starting to become to, to raise interest at least as foundation, uh, which is a legal entity established independently of its founders, uh, created, uh, and basically it's an alternative to trust, uh, which is pretty familiar in the common law jurisdictions. Uh, and it can be created for charitable, non-charitable, and uh, other private property management purposes. Unlike a company, a uh, foundation does not have shareholders and own assets on its own behalf to achieve uh, certain goals and acts in accordance with, uh, with, the, with the, in accordance with constitute uh, documents consisting of charter and bylaws. Usually, uh, as I mentioned, foundation is a direct alternative to trust and typically suitable for like, clients operating in jurisdictions where the concept of trust is, well, is less well known. Uh, charitable organizations using private foundations for donations, uh, clients looking to provide secure inheritance, planning and ask protection, and clients who require a greater degree of privacy and control. Uh, 
Going next, uh, I'd like to dwell a little more on the uh, uh, framework for uh, collective investment schemes or funds in the AFC. Uh, this is drawing a lot of attention lately, uh, especially uh, starting from, from this year, uh, since there were uh, tax amendments, I mean, since, since tax amendments came into force starting from this year, uh, which basically allows uh, investment income of funds registered in the AFC to be exempt from uh, corporate income tax. So uh, this is by far the most popular, uh, most popular license uh, at the moment. Uh, so I, I, I thought I'd just uh, uh, you know spend some more time uh, explaining what uh, AFC funds regime offers. Uh, so the funds framework itself was modeled upon the practice of leading funds jurisdictions uh, such as Ireland, Luxembourg, Cayman Islands, uh, Singapore. And the principal legislative piece regulating establishment management of uh, funds in the FC is called Collective Investment Scheme Regulations. Uh, in terms of Governance structure funds in the AFC, as you can see uh, on the slide, can be either managed uh, by external fund manager or, uh, or in the form of self-managed funds, whereby a fund manager acts in the capacity of a director of the fund. Uh, in terms of distribution, funds uh, in the AFC are classified as either exempt or non-exempt, uh, depending on investor profile. Exempt funds, which are designed for non-professional investors, are required to comply with other strict requirements in terms of risk management, capital requirements, uh, marketing and other operational aspects. Uh, on the contrary, for the purpose of managing funds exclusively for professional investors, uh, one create a fund uh, in the form of an exempt fund, which imposes lighter and less stringent requirements. Uh, and uh, AFC, um, AFC has its own definition of what a professional client is uh, and uh, its requirements are again like pretty in line with international standards but accommodates um, local like local local uh, realities uh, importantly AFC offers a wide choice of legal forms for establishment of fund vehicles uh, if we speak about funds in of you know like in with classical investment structures such as uh, such funds can be created in the AFC in the form of either investment company or limited partnership as I uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, lastly, funds can in the AFC can be set up as special funds uh, depending on their investment strategy. Currently, uh, one can register a private equity, venture capital, and Islamic funds. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there is a separate regulatory regime for uh, uh, real estate investment funds, REITs, uh, which, pre which prescribes additional requirements with respect to structure of assets, uh, distribution of profits, and minimum share of rental income from uh, investment income. Uh, and this is a uh, type of fund which we're also seeing uh, a lot of interest to uh, lately. Uh, and given rapid development of commercial inf infrastructure in Kazakhstan, uh, we expect this, uh, this demand to keep uh, an increase going forward. Uh, and uh, this is this is this is like basically with the features of uh, REITs. Uh, and uh, concluding my, you know, like concluding my presentations, I'd like to again uh, compare key features of C funds regime. Uh, these are the other established fund jurisdictions. So as you might see, it's not strikingly different from, uh, from, from other places. Generally, the funds framework is in, in the AFC, as I mentioned, is deemed to be pretty flexible, uh, provides wide latitude for operations and uh, doesn't impose too cumbersome restrictions in our view. Uh, as in places like Netherlands or Cayman Islands, uh, there are no restrictions for foreign and self-managed funds, uh, for participation of fund manager in the fund, uh, for investment in financial instruments, for non-consideration. Uh, likewise, uh, likewise, except for non-exempt funds, there are there are no requirements to appoint custodians, fund administrators, and registration of the fund. So, 
so I will stop here. Uh, I hope the uh, presentation was, was helpful and useful. And uh, should any of the participants have any further questions, uh, you can reach out to, through Tenor uh, and we'll be able to provide further explanations or consultations. Thank you for your time. Tamir, you're muted. Okay, sorry. Um, thank you very much, Tamir Lan. So as you can see, extensive opportunities in the AIFC for structuring investment activities and commercial activities in line with international standards and a wide range of available organizational and legal forms uh, really um, make our ju jurisdiction a, a truly unique one allowing investors uh, to choose the solutions that uh, best uh, suit their investment profile. And now I would like to note that within uh, the Business Connect, uh, there is a specific unit, the investment department, which is responsible for sourcing and supporting deals, as well as um, promoting a real bankable projects, seeking investments in Kazakhstan and in the region. And ultimately, with understanding the latest trends and investors' needs connects the source of deal with the source of financing, i.e. a sell side and a buy side. So uh, Elena Ten, uh, the senior manager of investment department, will tell you more about this. Elena, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, Tamir. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, let me share my presentation now. Um, yeah, so um, thank you very much, uh, James. There, thank you my, very much, Tamir, for outlining key benefits of our jurisdiction and how we can optimally structure the presence at AFC. And uh, I would like to, uh, as Tamir already mentioned, we are, uh, as an uh, investment department and investment team at AFC, we are responsible at matching uh, the prospective projects with the, the prospective investors. So what we are basically doing here, uh, we are compiling uh, the pipeline of the projects from different sources, which is uh, our personal network, which is various private equity funds, including the government private equity funds. Also, we uh, take the potential projects from the pipeline of social entrepreneurial corporation, and we uh, perform uh, certain procedures over the projects to check uh, whether they're bankable, to check their uh, shareholder structure. We do high level due diligence on the projects and if needed, we can also do additional packaging on this project. So we prepare teasers and investment proposals. I will tell later more about our team, but we basically uh, we have a very diverse team with different experience with industries, experience and also professional consultants from big four. Uh, most of them are ACC or uh, CFA qualified. So, yeah, so uh, the team has a very good both industry and consulting experience in helping to find the uh, financing for the projects. And then we match the project with the investors. Uh, we do it free of charge. There is no success fee or any other fee that we charge. So we do it in the framework of our main dates. We have a certain KPI, the amount that of foreign direct investment that have to be attracted to the country. And uh, within our uh, pipeline of investors, there are private local investors, there are development banks and financial organizations. Currently, our team is very um, focused on expanding our presence to the region. So we have uh, outreach to the Uzbekistani and Kyrgyzstani private equity funds, which are also currently looking at the Kazakhstani pipeline of projects. And we are also keen to uh, include in our pipeline also projects from Uzbekistan, from Kyrgyzstan or any other Central Asian republics. Uh, yeah, basically uh, how we do it is um, uh, when we have uh, like initial lead, uh, either from the buy side or from the sell side, uh, we uh, make a preliminary call. We conclude either MOU or NDA in order to secure the flow of information between the parties. And then we um, ask for additional information. If, for example, there is a sell side project, 
uh, we do internal uh, review and verification of the project. So we ask additional information. Uh, normally, we do not take all the projects into our pipeline. So the project has to have certain requirements, has to meet certain requirements in order to be included to the project. So our team is doing quite a granular work in analyzing the project and the company. So we ask for historical and financial statements for management presentation. If this is a prospective uh, project for the expansion or this is a greenfield project, we ask for a business plan and budgets and forecasts. And also as a, as a must, we review the shareholder structure. So uh, what is a shareholder structure? Who is the ultimate beneficiary owner? Uh, and we also do um, risk management checks. So we check if there are any history of uh, litigations or claims against the company, any controversy or any ethical and money laundering issues concerning the company. And then after we understand the project structure and who owns the project, uh, we uh, conclude on its bankability. So we have internal scoring system. Uh, and uh, after we conclude that we take this project into the pipeline, we reflect the project on our uh, website. So we created a website, which is quite new. This is called investmentplatform.kz. On this presentation, you will see uh, the link to the site. And we reflect uh, there are around 60 projects, which we consider the most prospective one. So for these projects, we are ready to act as a PMO, project management office. We are ready to participate in organization of the calls in preparation of data room assistance uh, for the sales site and also to act as a um, mediator between the sell side and the buy side and to facilitate the flow of information between the two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and um, this is a short uh, like snapshot over our pipeline. So uh, overall, we have uh, um, more, in, more than 200 uh, projects in our pipeline, but we consider uh, the top projects there are around uh, 60 or 70 of them now. And uh, I believe 60 are reflected on our investment platform now. Uh, we also um, quite engaged in uh, uh, different webinars when we um, tell about what we are doing. And we also uh, strive to encourage the projects to be included in our pipeline. So if you are uh, the project or the investor that's seeking uh, to invest in some Kazakhstani or Central Asian projects, please feel free to fill in our questionnaire. This is a small one on our website. You can reach out to us and then we will, we will connect with you shortly. Yeah. and. Um, uh, basically, this is a snapshot of uh, different tools that can be used to structure the project to make it successful. So there are tools that are available at AFC, and uh, there are also tools that are available uh, just in the uh, Kazakhstani, uh, in, in Kazakhstan overall. Uh, and uh, also a few words uh, about uh, our team. So uh, this is not uh, just a team that assists in the private transactions. There are also experienced uh, uh, people that have worked in the government sector. So uh, the team is not only having outreach to the private buy side, but also to the uh, government, um, through the government channels, for example, through the embassies. And we are also planning to expand in this direction. Uh, yeah, and basically what I would like to encourage you is we have the link to the questionnaire at our platform. And if you are the project who are seeking an investor, I will repeat myself on, or if you are a potential buy side who will, uh, who wants to invest in the project in Kazakhstan or Central Asia region, please feel free to contact us. And then we will identify the potential race of cooperation. Thank you very much. Tamer, I think you're muted. Yes, okay. Thank you very much, Elena, for your informative uh, presentation. And it is very important that the EIFC ecosystem has such a tool as Invest Platform allowing an investor to choose a, a, a real bankable project and uh, receive the services provided by your department, which uh, without doubt contributes to improving the investment climate in the country and the region and uh, thereby uh, contributing to the sustainable economic development of the country. And finally, I'm happy to give a floor to a senior partner of Azara Services, a participant company of the AAFC, 
rendering a wide range of consultancy services. So, um, uh, Mr. Paul Pullinger, please, your, the floor is yours. And, um, and Paul Pullinger will speak on optimizing and protecting investment return and at the AFC platform. Please, Paul, go ahead. Thank you, Tenor, and uh, honorable panelists, and ladies and gentlemen, attendees of the webinar. While I just um, share my screen, um, I can tell you about Azara Services. We've been here in um, the Sultan for four years now as the first legal consulting and advisory firm based in the AFIC. And that's my presentation. And first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Timor, James and Termalin for inviting us to participate and I can assure you that the, the Business Connect, as the AFIC, are flexible, transparent, and extremely helpful in um, engaging with them to be able to um, establish financial firms and also to attract investments. Now, what about the uh, Kazakh investment market? Some people call it a frontier market. Some people call it the emerging nest market. We actually call it an investment market. And that's because actually it's, it's a whole range here. And we're confident with the, the tools and practices and platforms that the Kazakh government have put in place, which is necessary for it to be a fully fledged investment market, are already available and proven. And this has been achieved over the last 30 years of independence, of which uh, we're celebrating this year in uh, December. Outside of Kazakhstan, mainly the, oops, the, the areas which are known for um, is oil and gas, minerals and agriculture. And the less well-known areas are the SME, the specialist sector. And that's primarily because of size and current importance within the um, um, GDP structure. Now, the government is very clear. Their strategy is to diversify the economy, move it away from a reliance on extraction and minerals, increase the contribution of agriculture so it's stable, sustainable, and exportable, and actually develop high tech and digital and other industry sectors which will help the economy be stable more long term. And as you can see, our view is actually the intersection of this here in the two between the light blue and the dark blue is very small. The goal and the investable area where greatest returns can be achieved is that the intersection of the large and known and the opportunity around privatization, PPP, healthcare infrastructure, service sector, digital and high tech is where the the greatest investment potential is to grow the private sector and the professional services as, and the SME. And overall, if you have a look at where uh, most industry analysts are anticipating growth of 3.9% to 4.3% year on year until 2026, it's a growth market. There's plenty of investment opportunity outside of what's currently known. And this is the, one of the important facets of Business Connect and the contribution that they're making of highlighting new investment areas within Kazakhstan. Now, what, what do we mean? Give, give me an example is often what I'm asked. Well, Kazakhstan and the AFIC have signed an MOU with OneWeb, which is a low orbit satellite uh, transmission system. Why is that important? Why am I highlighting this as the, uh, uh, the uh, space as the frontier market in Kazakhstan? Well, to be honest, digitalization of infrastructure is really important. And it's important for several things. It enables financial inclusiveness. And why does it do that? Kazakhstan is the 10th largest country in the world, the largest landlocked country. It has a very low density population, so it only has 19 million people in a very big space. Financial inclusion requires digital access. What else requires digital access? Agriculture. 
is a huge opportunity for modernization of the agriculture sector within Kazakhstan. And digitalization is about better sowing of seed, better use of fertilization, greater harvest to achieve the sustainable and um, self-sustaining agriculture sector for the country and also as an export. Now, it requires that for the high-tech industry and machinery that's required for the agriculture sector. For example, Klaas, which is a German manufacturer, has just opened a new uh, factory for manufacturing their equipment. Now, as you do that and you introduce new high-tech technology and machinery, you need professional services which go with that. Not in one place, but in many places across the country. So you're creating employment across the country and professional services to support and help and maintain the new equipment and the new high-tech world. This, again, requires um, high amounts of education. We've seen people look at foundations, as Turnbull was discussing, um, to establish. Other things which digitalization require, e-commerce. Well, Wildberries is present here within the center, as James highlighted. But you know, how do you deliver the last mile delivery to a village of 50 people, which is 100 kilometers away from the next major center, which is 200 people? That's the sort of problems of where we talk about last mile. It's not from a box down the road with a bit of cable or copper wire. It's actually hundreds of kilometers we're talking about. And the role of digitalization and the things like drone delivery and modernization of delivery mechanisms are going to be an important uh, investment area to help. Another area which uh, benefits from this is healthcare. How do you deliver high quality healthcare everywhere effectively? Well, robotic healthcare requires digital infrastructure. What does that enable? It enables you to build clinics in many more places and have specialists available through robotic healthcare. And that will greatly improve or the already robust framework which is in place to support the uh, health of the nation. And these are basic things where uh, investors and people who are looking to set up financial firms and vehicles uh, as in investment trusts or funds can benefit the country and find real opportunities to uh, create profit and create a benefit to the, to the region. Now, this is the same model as Germany had done with the middle stack. It's about investment, it's about money, it's about know-how, and it's about IP. And both James and Timberland have highlighted repeatedly the benefits of the AFIC law, the AFIC court and arbitration services, which protect your investment, money, know-how, and IP. It's a good place to come and do business. And we've been helping firms, both as investment and wealthy individuals as investors, and financial firms set up their investment vehicles and funds here in Kazakhstan. Now, how, how does it work? There's two aspects to uh, um, you know, the world in Kazakhstan, and they link very nicely together. There's the Kazakh world of special economic zones, which has been discussed already, and free enterprise zones and PPP initiatives. The privileges and conditions that they bring are about the use of money. That's about early early project savings and benefits. That's uh, savings on customs and duties. It's about savings on VAT. It's about property tax exemptions, land tax exemptions, corporate income tax exemptions. And these last for a limited period of time, maybe up to seven years for many projects. But if it's a significant project, maybe up to 25 years. So they're about helping the construction and launch projects. The AFIC privileges and contingencies focus on returns on money. That's for the people who are providing finance, know-how and IP. And these last up until 2066, so a lot longer period. And these are about exemptions and benefits on dividends, on capital gains, on um, direct income tax. Uh, there's privileges and conditions on currency contracts and how they work in settlements. There's special rules for those um, within the FIC. And there's many more examples. But these two link together and make an investment environment which is unique and scalable both in Kazakhstan and other surrounding countries in the EAEU. 
Apologies if you can hear some background noise here. I'm in, in the heart of the AFIC and uh, the rest of my team are celebrating with some uh, colleagues next door the uh, authorised information and permissions to launch a brand new, what will be a quite a large fund here in uh, Kazakhstan. So I apologise for that. But as I was saying, the, the Republic of Kazakhstan privileges and conditions focus on improving the use of money, reducing the development risk, it's focused on increasing employment in the regions and the, the 14 special economic zones that were highlighted and supports GDP growth and tax. AFIC is for financiers. It gives long-term investors benefits in terms of them protecting their investment, encourages capital liquidity and reinvestment, and supports, again, GDP growth and diversification. These two together make a unique um, opportunity for establishing investment vehicles and funds within Kazakhstan and looking for projects which link these two together, not only um, provide greatest um, opportunity for the country, but the greatest return and benefit for the, uh, the individuals and the companies who are making the investment. So, how have we been helping firms? and investors. Well, first of all, let's be clear, it is four years old, the FIC, and AIX was a brand new exchange. And every year we've seen an acceleration of available liquidity within the market. And as Terminum was identifying, there are an increasing number of funds are being established to invest in the local country and the surrounding areas. However, the Structuring, as we've highlighted, between Kazakhstan and um, the FIC is increasingly important to maximize and protect your returns as an investor. Uh, as an investor, what, what can you do here in the FIC? Well, you can do straightforward crowdfunding. It's low cost and your you know, income from your crowdfunding is protected and exempt from tax. You know, we've already highlighted the uh, application for retail in AIX and also the launch of um, things like Kazat and Prom here as um, a privatization. There are significant um, opportunities for individual retail and professional investors here in the AIX. But there are other exchanges too and other trading markets which can happen. And there's a lot of crypto exchanges and commodity exchanges being discussed about how they can be set up within the framework of the AIX, which I think you'll see over the next six months. Quite a few of those be launched um, to focus on specific industries. Funds. We talked about risk pooling and uh, collective investment schemes. More and more of these being created, and that's what's being set up right in next door. And they're providing a real strong flow of capital for local firms to invest, modernize, and for, for traditional companies become more green in their use of technology and energy, which is very important for things like the extraction and uh, mining business. Direct investment is, is um, as James was discussing, FDI is ever growing in, in Kazakhstan. Uh, tractors and machine agriculture machine is just one example where joining benefits of project process Kazakhstan and the AFIC financing focus together really pays off. And, and there's a couple of areas, and we've already looked at uh, things like joint ventures, special companies, holding companies, foundations, funds. But well, there's some other additional things which need to be considered when forming our structures. It's about capital flow. And there's a difference between um, AFIC entities, which are fully owned, foreign owned, and non-fully foreign owned, about how capital flow works. There's banking services um, in terms of currency payments, also quite important in terms of which particular structures you use. In, in Under Kazakh, if you're investing in oil and gas, you need to consider the um, impact of local goods, works and services criteria. How do you create an investment structure um, 
within the FIC in Kazakhstan to enable you to have a high proportion of local goods, works and services. And of course, there's tax between multiple jurisdictions, which need to be taken into consideration. On the right-hand side, protection and re of money. The, there's a big, um, what's the best way of describing it? There, there are many Kazakh investors who are looking to return their money into, into Kazakhstan to help Kazakhstan grow and mature, and become increasingly strong economically uh, in, and use its um, base of being a friend, and culture of being a friend for all nations, um, are looking to bring their money back now that the AFIC is put in place um, better um, frameworks than many other tax um, and the financial centers, such as BB or, or the Caribbean islands. And we're, we're helping them in terms of bringing back large scale investments into the country to, to enable the country to grow. And these structures can include family office, foundation funds. Holding companies. Now, this requires actually knowledge around intergenerational planning, future investments, tax, where's the money coming from? And that's the breadth of services that we're seeing being asked for and working with Business Connect closely. Um, I, I know that there's an increase of demand and the FIC provides a secure and safe platform for those um, entries to the to the market so where we are now is let me wrap up saying it's a good safe environment it has in place what you need to be able to as an investor reduce your risk and make your risk more robust and as somebody who's providing um, needing financial structuring either as a financial firm or because you're structuring an NFDI direct project or you're bringing money back, it has all the legal entity structures that you need and to be able to make your money safe and secure here within the FIC. And we're happy to work with Business Connect in bringing those services to you and helping you to achieve benefits of the privileges and conditions of the FIC platform that I've outlined. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, from our side, I can uh, say that it's really important that uh, here uh, at the AIFC, we have uh, such resident companies as Ozara Services, uh, having a vast expertise in structuring investment and uh, uh, you know, to uh, give a legal advice to the uh, companies uh, seeking to expand their presence in Central Asia or in Kazakhstan via AFC platform and uh, to facilitate uh, their uh, establishing process and uh, advice on how to best structure them, their investment activities to uh, provide the optimal uh, investment returns. And we uh, are also happy to work uh, with you as a ancillary service provider within AFC. And uh, also uh, saying about as an ecosystem that we managed to create since our inception, uh, I, I can say that uh, we managed uh, to develop a full-fledged multifunctional ecosystem offering all the instruments and solutions that investors may need. And therefore, uh, our, main uh, our main philosophy as a Business Connect is to facilitate regional and international investors seeking to establish their presence or, or to expand uh, to do business in the region throughout the, all the uh, life cycle of business and uh, to be a partner of choice to engage capital to Kazakhstan and the region. Uh, for uh, sustainable economic growth. So uh, to sum up, I, I hope that you all enjoyed our session and uh, found it informative and useful for you. And uh, now uh, I'd like to ask you to stay tuned uh, as the next session 
investment literacy, competencies and trends of a professional development in the field of finance will follow very soon. So uh, thank you again for your kind attention and uh, just uh, have a nice day ahead. Thank you very much.